Cool. We're recording. It took me like a long time to figure out. I was like, where's the lighting going to be the best? Because like <laughs> Zoom already doesn't do any favors for you. <laughs> it's like I'm seeing something that's so grainy right now. It's <laughs> not forgiving at all. It's whatever. Whatever. How are you? I'm all right. How's uh? What are you, what are you up to? I'm doing a lot of stuff virtually and then with clients like outside of the lot, which is nice. So I'll go to their houses and work out in their backyards, which is cool. But yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you like that? Like being kind of yeah. like your own sort of um, independent trainer? You know what I mean? You don't have like a boss? It's kind of funny because that's originally like what my plan was. I just didn't expect it to happen this quickly. But um, I actually I have my own LLC and everything so I can like do it legally and get money and not have to worry about you know, getting audited by the RRS, which is, you know, good. But um, yeah, so I mean, you know, it's a little slow, but like I said, it's happening a lot sooner than I anticipated it. But yeah, what are you up to aside from school? That's it. Um, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of school. Yeah. A lot sure. of teaching, researching and stuff like that. So, but doing this on the side is like super fun because it's like, yeah. It's totally. opportunity to just like talk to people and eat ice cream. I made a pop tart video yesterday with one of my buddies, and right, you told me that. <laughs> we were we he was his idea like a month ago to compare pop tarts to like the all these toaster tarts. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the toaster tarts suck. Like they're just. <laughs> you can clearly taste that there's no sugar in this. <laughs> yeah, it's like some oh god, like pop tarts are so processed, but these things are like chalky. Oh God. It was yeah. so bad, but it was, it was a fun experience. So I was like, I, know, oh. I, I, I'm such like, you know, I'm like a food person. So like whenever there's like any sort of like taste test or like, let's try this or this or this, like whatever kind of video I'm like, click. <laughs> <laughs> are you a, are you a pop tart fan? So I'm like, I'm, I sound like a trainer. I'm, I, I don't eat a lot of like processed sugary, like packaged stuff. Like I said, like, I don't even really have a sweet tooth anyway, but I do like if, I'm on a road trip and I'm like, we're stopping and I'm starving. I do like, I like the s'mores pop tarts and I like the blueberry ones. <laughs> All right. Do you ever, do you ever freeze them? I don't know. It says on the box to freeze them. I've never tried it. Really? No. I mean, the only, I'm trying to think like Thin Mints, obviously. That's like the one thing that I'll like freeze and eat. Um, Milky Ways are really good frozen. Okay. I got to try that. But other than that, no, I'm very boring when it comes to like snacks. <laughs> so what do you, uh, what's your what's your diet like this is everyone she's a she's a personal trainer for a living she's super uh, into the fitness thing we'll link like the um her food page down below it is super rad so give us give us an idea of what you eat Janie. okay so when i'm like on on track and i'm doing healthy and then you know i mean i don't really i I always tell my clients too, I, I never really prescribe a specific diet. I'm all as like silly as it sounds. I'm all about intuitive eating because I'm really for like eat what you want, because if you're depriving yourself, you're really just not going to be satisfied. And then you'll probably end up eating more than you like should or like anyway. But when I'm on my like, you know, my good eating plan, I usually start my day with coffee and then a smoothie. So I'll either make my little chocolate peanut butter one or <laughs> or I'll make like a berry one but I, I pack stuff in there like if you guys look at my um my Instagram page I have a whole highlight thing that's just all my smoothies and the list I swear the ingredient list is like at least a dozen things if not more because can I, uh, can I share the screen on this one yeah 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 absolutely. All right, I'm gonna get up keep talking keep talking about it I'm gonna share the screen yeah so I um I, I mean, I think I base all of my smoothies, whether it's fruity or like more chocolatey or coffee um, with banana, because I think it's just like creamy, it's good, it's sweet. And that way you don't have to add anything like honey or maple syrup or anything like that. But um, I'll do, if I'm doing fruit, I typically do like banana, peaches, um, I'll do some spinach because it's a super, super easy. Um, okay, so you were talking about your ingredient list for smoothies. Keep talking about it. So you said bananas. You said bananas are like a key staple for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, my thing is like, I like bananas because they're super versatile. Like you can do something like more chocolatey, caramel or peanut buttery, or you can do fruity. If you don't like bananas, I always recommend doing mango because it kind of gives you that same texture because it's a little creamy. But um, I'll do a bunch of different fruits. So if I'm at Whole Foods or wherever I end up food shopping, I'll just pick up a bunch of like stuff, whether it's on sale or like, you know, I really, I like pineapple a lot. I like cherries. 
um, when they're in season, I'll actually just get a bunch of peaches and then just cut them up and freeze them myself. Um, and I also am a really, really big fan of those wild blueberries, like the little tiny ones, because okay. they're with antioxidants and they taste like really good. Um, but yeah, I'll do that. And then I'll do like half and half, like almond milk and water to like fill the little blender because I like my smoothies more liquidy because I find them easier to consume that way. Because with a thick smoothie, it's like, I feel like I need a spoon for it. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that's more of like, um, almost like a Wendy's, what is that called? A frosty. A frosty? Yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, have you, do you have pliables down by you? Yeah. Or is that like just a Jersey thing? Yeah, I know there's one at Rutgers. There's like yeah, the one, whatever yeah, yeah. street that is, the pliable. Are you, you a fan of that? Um, I think they're gimmicky because it's like you're paying so much money for something that's like this big. And like, like yeah. I don't know. I'm like, I'm weird with things like that. Like, coffee, I'm like, I know I can make it better at home. But anyway, I digress. Um, I like to, so on top of all the fruit and all the stuff, I like to add, oh, I also have, I usually have like a big like Ziploc bag of frozen spinach in my freezer too because it's like super easy to just like grab a handful and throw it in because yeah. it's tasteless and it adds a lot of nutrients into your um, smoothie, which is good. And that's like what I'm all about in the morning. Um, but then I add in a bunch of like different, not, they're not particular, like I wouldn't call them supplements. They're just like superfoods. So yeah. I add in chia seeds, flax meal. Both of them are really high in omega threes, which are good for your brain. And also high in fiber, which is also like obviously good for you. Um, um, then I'm trying to think. I also add MCT oil sometimes, which again, oh. is good for your brain. <laughs> MCT oil. What uh, we can we can go. I have like I have so many follow up questions. I'm trying to toggle the screen right now to get to your your Instagram. <laughs> I think the problem was my my computer was dead at first, so it's like plugged in. So I'm gonna oh, okay. try to share this. So this is this is Jamie's Instagram. Wait, Jamie, can you see it? I said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, this is Jamie's Instagram. It's J I. It's an L L I M O yeah. underscore. So first, two, first two letters of my first, my middle, and my last name. What's your middle name? Linton. Linton. Lynn. No, it's not oh. LinkedIn. Lynn. <laughs> what? <the>, what? <laughs> Imagine that would be the weirdest middle name ever for a girl. <laughs> Linton. Yeah. So this is uh, Jamie's been at this for. Would you post every day? Um, I post at least like I would say two to three times a week. Like I when I first started it, I was really like adamant about posting every day for whatever reason, and then you know, I kind of was like, eh, you know, I don't have to, but um. Yeah, a lot of the things I do are like gluten free, dairy free, even though I don't really subscribe to a certain diet. But so if you go all the way to the top of my page, you're going to see that little, um, the little smoothies highlight. And that's where I list like all of my smoothies. And like, you know, it has those, are, that's like a really basic one. But as you go along, you're going to see that like some of them have like over a dozen ingredients in them because I'm just weird. And like, like I said, I like to add in a bunch of things. But um, like I said, flax, yeah, um, MCT oil, protein powder, um, uh, camu camu powder, which is apparently, I mean, these are all things that I've read. I'm not really, you know, licensed to subscribe for diets and things like that. But from what I've read, camu camu powder is really, really good for your immune system. So um, take everything Jamie says with a grain of salt. Yeah, don't, don't be like, you know what, I have to take, I have to do what Jamie does because she said <laughs> This is just what I do. I'm not, I, you know, anyway. But um, I also add in maca powder, again, from what I've read, it's good at, for your hormones. Um, what else? I like to add acai powder for color and just taste, and it's packed with antioxidants. Whoa. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. I like hemp hearts. Like, again, I could list probably two dozen things that I put in my smoothies. But, um, yeah, so I start my days off with smoothies, typically, because... I mentioned this earlier, but I don't really have a sweet tooth. So I feel like if I start my day off with like natural sweetness, it kind of like, you know, keeps it at bay for the rest of the day if I yeah. even have anything sweet. But um, yeah, no, all of my smoothies are listed on there. And you're going to see as you like tap along, it's going to go from like the list being this long to the list being like this long. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting how you, um, stop sharing. Um, that was interesting how you had like your, the first movie was like three or four 
you know, fruits. And that's like something you get at like Smoothie King. It's just like tastes good, but like all sugar. And then yeah, now it's yeah. like you're, you're hitting all the points of the health with like your protein, your hormone health, your heart health, your brain health. And I'm like, man, like there's really an art to that. I, I, I enjoy that. And I don't know. I've like followed questions with a lot of these things, but I like, <laughs> I like that you said how like if you have the smoothie first thing in the day, it kind of, it takes care of that craving the sweet tooth later. Yeah. And you know what I also think too, I mean, like as a trainer too, I think I'm sure you can attest to this. Well, um, when you start your day off with like exercise or like, you know, having like a healthy meal or a smoothie or a shake or something like that, like, I feel like it starts your day off on the right foot. So like whenever I work at, like, I really try to work out in the morning in quarantine, it's been a little different because, you know, I'll wake up a little later, I'll go for a walk, something like that. But I always feel like it gets the ball rolling. And it's like, when you make the decision to, you know, go for a walk in the morning or have something healthy, you're like, okay, well, I want to keep this up throughout the day. Like if I wake up in the morning and I have like leftover pizza for breakfast, which I've like done multiple times, I'm like, um, well, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's, uh, um. I'm coaching a kid right now and he says the hardest thing is waking up and like working out. Yeah. He's a super motivated kid and he's like, has a good job and everything. But he's like, dude, like if I, if I go past like noon, he's like, I'm not going to work out. Yeah, no, I, and I, I used to be the same exact way, especially before I really started like, you know, getting into fitness a little bit more. And like before it was my job, like in, in college, like if I didn't make it to the gym by like, like 2 PM, I was like, I'm not going. <laughs> I wasn't a late night gym person and I just, you know, I like to get it out of the way early. Yeah. Weren't you, um, weren't you like going to be professional ice skater or something like that? You were, you were <laughs> no. pretty tall along. I remember that. Like we took public speaking together and Jamie sat like kind of like behind me or something and we got to be friends. And I remember you saying how you like, you were like, really, really good with ice skating. And I was like, oh, my mom used to ice skate. So I'm like, I'm interested in that. Yeah, so I was a competitive figure skater from the time that I was, I want to say like seven until I was 17. So for 10 years, a good 10 years, if not 11 years. Um, but yeah, I competed. It's funny with figure skating before, like, and I never wanted to go to the Olympics. Like that wasn't what I was going for. I just liked it because I was, you know, it was a sport. It was fun. I was good at it. Um, but when you're at like that, like kind of amateur level, the main season for skating is actually from like, April until like October November so it's basically like a summer sport which like you wouldn't think because ice skating it's not a particularly warm sport but um yeah I competed all throughout middle school and high school and then when I got to Rutgers I was actually um on the executive board for this figure skating club there which was nice because and it was funny too because one of my friends who I grew up skating with actually started the club so we joked and called ourselves the burnout club because we were all just people who like used to compete and just, you know, messed around at pro tech ponds, which was like down the road for yeah. you know, an hour or so. But were you, uh, who were some of your favorite uh, professionals that you followed? Like, I know like Scotty Hamilton, Christy Yamaguchi, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you, were you friends of them? Oh, okay. um, I, I, my mom claims this is how I liked ice. It's like I fell in love with ice skating, and I don't, I don't know if I can verify this because I was like two, so I don't have very uh, vivid memories of being two. But she said that like when the Olympics were on, I saw Michelle Kwan, and I was like, I want to do that. And again, I think she just likes to say that, so it sounds cute and like you know nostalgic. But yeah, I love Michelle Kwan. Um, the girl who won the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. Her name's Yuna Kim. She is Korean and I like, I love her. I love Adam Rapon. I love um, Ashley Wagner. There's like, you know, there's so many people now. And um, Nathan Chen, he, um, he's like probably one of the strongest male figure skaters in the world now. And he represents the US and he's like the quad king. So all of his jumps are like effortless, but yeah. Were you, uh, did you ever, were you able to like jump and spin several times and how do you get, that's the question I always have is like, how do you get the footing to like jump off? Cause it's like so slippery. How do you, how do you do that? So it's funny with, I mean, you start obviously very basic. There's something called like a bunny hop, which is basically like a skip. 
and that's how you start off like your jumps and then you go from there to like a waltz jump and it's just like you kind of build like you know with running like first you run you know a half mile then you run a mile then you just build on it like it's the same thing with skating like you go from a bunny hop to a waltz jump where you add like a 180 turn and then it just goes from there I mean I look back at the stuff I used to do and I'm like I don't think I could do that now but if you know given the time to train I could definitely get back to it like riding a bike but you know um it's just kind of like a natural progression of your skills I guess is the best way to describe it (laughs) were there any was there anything that you always like kind of wanted to do like like with skateboarding like I always wanted to land an impossible was there any like one trick for you that you were like I wanted to do that so I wouldn't say like there was one particular trick in general but um I always like the way I kind of gauged where skating like skaters were is there's I'm sure you've heard this and everyone asks like as soon as I say I was a figure skater they're like could you do a triple axle like no I couldn't but the axle is basically like I would say it's like the like the jumping off point not to make a pun, but it's the jumping off point to get to like the next level of skating. So like when you're starting off and then you get to your single axle, which is like the first jump where you're going from just one revolution in the air to one and a half. That's why it's so difficult because it it has that extra 180 turn. Um, When you go from your single axle and then you start working on doubles, once you get your single axle, that's what makes you like, okay, you're like more than just a basic skater. Like you can do an axle. You're probably working on some combination jumps working on your doubles and then when you get to your double axle that's when it makes you like oh okay like she's definitely you know more elite like to get to her triples or her his or her triples whatever but I think like the axle is like the jump that every skater it's like a make or break point for skaters it's like that's where you either move on and continue to progress your skills or you're like okay I am not gonna get this I'm gonna quit (laughs) yeah I I kind of understand that like was there because there's also that element with ice skating. It's not only like extremely difficult with like your fitness and the finesse on the ice, but there's like that dance component. Yeah. So there's a lot of like off, off, like on land, like dance classes where you had to like really focus on that and put that on the ice. Yeah. So it's funny. I took ballet from the time I was two until I was 17. So for 15 years, I took ballet. But um, my, my last like six years of competing, yeah, I was, maybe not six, maybe five, four or five. Um, I had two coaches and they were husband and wife and they were from Italy. The wife was my choreographer and she was actually a prima ballerina in Italy. So it's funny you mentioned dance because that came in a lot with her choreography. And she was actually the one who did our like off ice training with ballet classes, obviously. <laughs> and then my coach, her husband was actually in um, the Olympics and he was like my regular, like we did jump spins, like everything, all the run throughs and stuff like that. But it was kind of cool how they had that team dynamic where you know, there wasn't any friction between coaches because there happens a lot of the times where coaches get very possessive of their skaters and they don't really want to share. But it was nice because they came in a pack and they offered both, you know, like the skills, coaching, and also choreography. I hope this computer stays on. Yeah, was <laughs> there, um, would, would you ever like want to coach or have you coached before? Um, so I did like a little bit of like coaching basically for like, like volunteer hours when I was in high school because there's things like when you start the classes that you take they're called snowplow sam because the first stop like imagine these are your skates you stop you push your blades out like this to stop you and it's called a snowplow stop so that's why it's called snowplow sam because you go from like you know very very basic where you're learning to just march and glide to little bunny hops all the way up to then you get to your waltz jump and that's when parents decide whether they want to invest in their child and get them lessons (laughs) But um, I haven't done any, like, coaching to the level that my coaches um, coached me, but I find myself pulling a lot of the things that they taught me as coaches when into my sessions when I'm working with clients. Yeah, yeah, and I guess, like, there's there's definitely, like, a lot of, it's funny with, like, personal training and going to the gym, and it's, like, it depends on who your client is. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's, like, behavioral changes. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like, I mean, I could be wrong, but with, like, ballet, dance, um, you know, ice skating, is that there's, there's so much almost, like, self-control, 
self-awareness of the atmosphere yeah. that you don't get from doing like a bunch of bicep curls or something you know yeah. what I mean? oh my gosh, it's such a it's mind game behavioral aspect that you're a part of that i'm i have no idea i'm like listen <laughs> just work harder don't need a bunch of junk and it'll, you'll get results yeah. there's is like a, a pretty wide thing well i always say like do you remember that show dance moms that was on tlc like that really terrible show i heard it was like it got out of hand but yeah. i know what you're so, talking about yeah it's like ice springs are basically that on steroids because, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, like, moms, I mean, you know, this was with every sport, but, like, a lot of moms want to live vicariously through their children, yeah. and it gets crazy sometimes. Like, I remember I was at a competition once, and it was in Hackensack, New Jersey, and a lot of the, they, that in Hackensack is actually one of, like, they call, it's like a powerhouse rink, like, they push out a lot of skaters who are, you know, really good, but I remember this one poor girl her parents came with her and they were like, they were, they had a reputation for being very like strict and kind of like a little borderline crazy with how they would, you know, raise their child. But I remember she didn't place in the competition and they drove home without her. They were like, get a, get a taxi home. <laughs> oh my gosh. How, how old was she? She was like nine. <laughs> that like, that will scar you. I know. It's like <laughs> the childhood trauma is like, <laughs> it's the most expensive part of dating. Jeez, like there's no Ubers back then. The girls yeah, don't stop. Exactly. Um, the they other like, parents had to take her home. You're What's that? Leaving. It was just so funny. We were just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, they're leaving. <laughs> That's nuts. I know, like, um, so I played, like, a lot of, like, baseball, mm -hmm. basketball growing up, stuff like that. And, like, that was, there was a team dynamic to that. But, like the sideline coaches, though, right? Yeah, like, in baseball specifically. Holy cow, man. It was, like, basketball was, you know, basketball, soccer was very team-based. Mm -hmm. And with baseball, it was like, if, if your son was the pitcher or the batter or whatever, and, like, he just struck out a bunch of times, like, those fathers were, like, hollering at the kids. Yeah. My parents never cared. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, my parents, were like, you know, obviously they cared and were, like, disciplined me, but they were, they would never step on my coach's toes or, like, be like, you need to do this better, this and this and this. It's like, you know, they let me do my thing, which I really, really appreciated. Yeah, were you uh were you ever involved in um, other sports as well, or or maybe um, not? So in middle school, I did tennis, which was you know, I feel like every girl at some point in her life does tennis. <laughs> yeah, I played for two years in high school. I was yeah. that was fun. Um, but aside from that, no, skating's very time consuming, and it was nice though because I went I went to the public high school right by me, and um, they were really understanding with my schedule. So at the end of the day for my whole high school career, like from freshman year all the way through, um, they put my gym and study hall at the end and I got exempt from gym. So I got to leave school like an hour and a half early, which was nice. Oh, that's awesome. Were, were you doing like a, like a seven day a week thing? So, um, I actually, so I trained out in Westchester, New York, which is about like an, uh, just over an hour from my house. And um, we would go out there Monday through Friday, and then Saturday I would skate at a rink that was only like thirty minutes from my house. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So where crazy. was where was like that transition? From like what? The train and the dog are like going crazy oh. here. Like the most inopportune time. That's okay. That always happens. I'm surprised my dogs haven't come down here. <laughs> what uh, what kind of dogs do you have? I have two King Charles Cavaliers. Can you like I don't know? Put your, yeah, put your phone up. I don't know what that looks like. They look like. Uh, I have way too many pictures of my dogs on my phone. <laughs> um. Okay. So this is my one. There you go. Oh, it's so small. Yeah, that's my one, and then I have another one too, and that's him. What are so their cool. names? That's Boo, and then the smaller one is Tippy. Boo and Tippy. Yeah. Where the so, names come from? Um, my mom like loves New Orleans, so both of them. I think Boudreaux's is a restaurant, and Tipatina's is a bar. So okay. go by Boo and Tippy because like their names are way too bougie and long for me to call them that. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you like the smoothie? Oh, it was great. It's um, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So Jamie sent me. Uh, let me get the. Uh, would you text it to me? I think I sent it to you on Instagram. Hmm, let me get that up. Yeah, so Jamie and I, as Jamie said, um, it's funny how I was like, Jamie, you have to come on the podcast. And she's like, well, 
I'm not like, I don't have a huge sweet tooth. And like, that's like completely the point of this podcast. Like when you can't come, your invitation's revoked. <laughs> yeah, so now it's gone. Um, but she gave me the smoothie idea because I love chocolate and I love peanut butter. Um, let me see. So this is her recipe that I just made. Um, I was, it's funny, I, um, I screenshotted it and I was the grocery store yesterday with my, my, my mask on and everything. Oh. I was like, okay, like, let's, uh, let's get this. So this <laughs> is, um, this is what we're looking at on the right side of the screen right here. Um, one frozen banana, one tablespoon of cocoa, cacao, uh, one tablespoon of peanut butter. Jimmy, I actually, uh, substituted, uh, like a bunch of tablespoons uh, powdered peanut butter. Okay. Like several tablespoons. <laughs> You're like, it's actually just peanut butter powder. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it was peanut butter powder. Um, <laughs> I did the cinnamon and I did um, a scoop of protein powder. I don't own flax, chia, or MCT, but I'm I think, you know what? I was like, I'll add them as options because I don't want you to go out of your way to buy all this crap to use at once. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to try them. Um, do you remember, do you remember, Rumi? I don't know if you ever met him. Um, he was big into, stop sharing. He was big into uh, chia seeds, mm -hmm. quinoa, and flax seed for like a while. Uh -huh. I don't know if he still does it, but <laughs> I had it once and I had chia seeds once and it was pretty good. It was like really filling. It was like a lot of fiber. Yeah, it's a lot of fiber. Um, but how did you, where was that? So you were really, okay, so like this, this like the bridge I'm trying to understand is, okay, so you were like a huge athlete, like growing up all throughout like high school, and then you made this jump to like fitness where you want to optimize your health, optimize like you're just, how you're feeling, how you're performing, and you want to help other people. Like where was that jump? Did you miss kind of competing or did you kind of go, you know what, I'm tired of like being coached. I kind of want to like explore my own avenues and like this is sort of what I want to catch on to. So it's funny that you were like, you're saying that I am tired of being coached. Cause I always say like with skating, I'm always glad I did it, but I'm always glad it's also over. <laughs> but like I said earlier, like I take a lot of the stuff that I took, that I learned while I was skating and then I apply it to my job. But um, so when I graduated, I graduated with a sport management degree. We were in technically the same school, but I just took the easier route cause I didn't want to do science. <laughs> well, it's, I don't know, you still took a bunch of hard classes. You probably took more business stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like financial accounting. I think I still have like PTSD from, <laughs> from that class. <laughs> but anyway, um, so my, my, my senior year, my last semester, I had an internship with Special Olympics, um, New Jersey, which is like a half hour from Rutgers or maybe 45 minutes, but it was great. And um, before that, I also had another internship in the city, but I was doing those and I was like, I can't really see myself being super motivated to sit behind a desk all day and just like you know work away and you know again it's I, obviously working for special olympics and doing that kind of stuff is very rewarding and it's you're doing great work but it just wasn't for me so right after i graduated i basically went through the motions that everyone goes through when they graduate and applied to a bunch of corporate jobs and i started looking at you know maybe i'll move into the city this and that and then i was like you know what I don't want to do that because I feel like I'm going to be bored out of my mind. Um, so I started looking up different personal trainer certifications. And I remember I actually reached out to you because I wanted to know which one you had. Um, but I ended up going with um, NASM, which is the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And from there, I looked at the Y right by me because I'd been going there for the long, for a long time. And I knew, you know, a lot of people there. So I talked to one of the trainers and, you know, just asked him what his journey was to get from, you know, starting out, just getting a certification to where he was because he had, you know, a little bit more of like administrative role at the gym as well. So I talked to him and I just, you know, picked his brain for a little while. And it just made me, I, even from that process of studying for my exam and, you know, realizing that, I didn't have to go down this corporate path just made me a lot more excited about working. <laughs> yeah. There's like, there's a sense of like autonomy there mm -hmm. that like, I always like my dad and I always talk about it that like, if you want to like, 
get to know someone, everyone likes to talk about themselves to yeah. an extent. So like when you kind of get to know someone, just ask them like, hey, what's your name? You know, yeah. what's your job? Where are you from? Do you have a family? What are your interests? Favorite movies, yeah, foods? Like, and, like, and, and people like to talk about themselves, their interests. And yeah. it's the easy I, thing to talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it's funny because like with, with like being like a personal trainer, it's like you have like a great personality and you're easy to talk to. And it's like, you can just kind of ask you be like, Hey, you know, what's going on in your life? What's going on? But, and then at the same time, you can kind of like guide them along this fitness journey. And it's like yeah. really rewarding because it's like, Oh, well, like we're going to be friends, but like, you're going to also pay me and yeah, I'm going to exactly. help you with your goals. It's like pretty fun. Cheap. Yeah. It's so yeah. funny that you said that because I've had, you know, during quarantine and COVID, everyone is just going for walks around here because I live in a pretty like, I wouldn't say like, I don't know, it's like kind of like a rural mountainy ish area. So there's lots of parks and trails to go on walks. And I've had clients like just text me because I have some clients who are like maybe like 10 years older than me or like somewhat around my age. But um so they'll text me and be like, hey, you want to go for a walk? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like, I'd love to meet up with you. And we'll get there. And they'll be like, do I have to pay you for this? And I'm like, no, you don't have to pay me for me to walk with you. <laughs> it's are really you, Are you now becoming like the person who people go to for advice on like yeah. fitness and nutrition? Oh my gosh. I have so many clients who will send me things on like Instagram and they'll be like, so what do you think of this product? Like, what do you, should I, should I get something? I'm like, no, I'm not a big fan of those skinny tees or like, no, I don't really think that, you know, this equipment is good, but I can send you this one instead, you know? Yeah. But, I remember I'm always I've always kind of taken the role of like the mom friend anyway. So I just basically have extended that to my clients. <laughs> That's awesome. I think the biggest question I got when I was a personal trainer was um, from all like the 40 year old moms mm -hmm. who, and every one of them, when they would cook dinner, they would have a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. And they're always like, Mike, can I have the glass of wine? And I'm like, you can do whatever you want. Like, yeah, exactly. I do not care at the end of the day. All I care about is like me and my family and my friends. And besides that, I don't really give a shit about most things in life. Yeah, exactly. But I was like, listen, like you're, you're asking me, how do I get abs? Yeah, well, we can talk about the wine. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> and like, I remember one of my clients, she asked me on the weekend. She kind of was like quiet about it. She was like, you know, Mike, this weekend I had two gin and tonics and like a captain and coke then we had a huge meal and then afterwards i had another glass of wine and then sunday i had some smorgasbord she goes how far behind do you think i am <laughs> and i was just like you know what like you're here at the gym you're working hard you enjoy it with your friends and family like just try to strike a balance yeah absolutely that's the exact same thing i preach to my clients yeah and I, I always tell people i'm like listen like you're not trying to get on stage for some you know olympia competition yeah. you don't have to have lines and things and everything just like whatever your healthy lifestyle is like do that yeah exactly no and i think that's what people need to realize a lot of the times because they i mean social media is a great thing but it's also like a terrible thing because you're constantly just comparing yourself to other people and i think people need to get out of that mindset of like i want to look like her or him i want to have that body because you have your body you know you can only affect your body so it's like everyone has their own idea of what healthy is and like you know some people like they'll have a diet coke with dinner and but they'll have you know instead of you know a mcdonald's big mac they'll have a salad and a diet coke it's like striking that balance of like what's going to be sustainable for you is the most important thing like i always say like you can't just go cold turkey like those pe people who come up to me and be like i want to lose you know 15 pounds this month. I'm not going to have any bread. I'm not going to have any sugar in this and that. I'm like, you can't do that to yourself because like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I was like, I, if you're depriving yourself, it's just, it doesn't benefit you. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I can't tell you how many times and you've definitely heard this too on like January 1st. <laughs> it's the worst time of the year to work at a gym. Yeah. Like the worst. And it's I like, it. it's terrible. Like, I've heard so many people say I'm giving up pizza. It's always pizza. I don't know what it is with pizza. Like, yeah, I'm like, if you're giving up pizza but still smoking a 12-pack of cigarettes a day, give up the yeah. cigarettes first. <laughs> One of my friends called me the other day. We had this, like, hour-long conversation. I was at the grocery store, and he was asking me about, like, getting stronger and, like, eating and the sources of protein, and he's, like, talking to me about the different types of protein powders and the different types of carbs. Hmm. And I was like, dude, how much – do you smoke every day? Cause he's a big yeah. weed smoker. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, a couple a day. I'm always high. I'm like, 
Dude, <laughs> like, you know, muscle milk versus diamatized. Like, stop smoking all your weed. Like, yeah, exactly. focus on the big things first, and then we'll get specific. Exactly. And, you know, like I, like I said, too, with starting your day off with, like, workout or, like, a healthy shake or something, it's, like, when you make those little tiny decisions, not only are they going to, like, kind of snowball through your day, they're going to snowball, like, over time, too. So it's, like, a lot of my clients have started walking, like, whether it's encouragement from me or just because they want to get out of the house during, like, quarantine. But, you know, it's, like, when you go for a walk, every day your body starts to kind of crave that motion. So it's like the days where it's rainy and you're kind of stuck inside. You're like, man, like I wish I could do something else. Maybe I'll try a 20 minute workout video on YouTube or something like that, you know? So it's like those little changes can really add up over time. And I think that's a lot more important than being like, I'm going to go on this blah, blah, blah cleanse or this blah, blah, blah diet. Like don't, ugh, I could go on for hours about how much I hate fad diets, but <laughs> like, I, it's just like, those things aren't sustainable, you know? Yeah. 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 There's a, do you have any qualms with like, I don't know, intermittent fasting? My big, I don't have any qualms about keto as much, but intermittent fasting, I want to like go berserk. <laughs> See, I'm the exact opposite. I hate keto, but intermittent fasting, I'm like, that's manageable. So what about, what about keto annoys you so much? I just think, okay. So, I mean, if done like in a healthy way, I sure, I guess it is sustainable and it's manageable, but I just, the idea of cutting out carbs completely basically, and like not being able to have fruit because it has too much sugar in it. Like, I think that already is intimidating for a lot of people and you know, when it comes to any diet, it just comes to calories, calories in, calories out. And yeah. so many people will credit their weight loss to a certain fad diet because they're like, oh my gosh, I tried paleo, I tried keto, I tried blah, 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 like Whole30, and I lost so much weight. And it's like, yeah, you lost that weight because you can't eat anything that you used to eat. You can't just sit on your couch and eat like a tray of Entenmann's crumb cake, you know? <laughs> I love the, I love how specific it is. <laughs> Like, you know, with the blue and the white package, you know, with the curls on top. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. I'm like, exactly yeah, you lost about. weight because you went from eating, like, you know, a crappy, like, Quaker Oats bar in the morning that's packed with sugar. That's basically like a Snickers bar. You yeah. went from that to, like, your, you know, McDonald's salad for lunch and then pizza for dinner. And now you can't eat any of that. So, of course, you're going to lose weight. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, right, that's the thing that drives me crazy about fad diets is because people just blindly follow them and then credit all of their weight loss and their progress to, and I'm not saying that progress is bad. Obviously it's great that people are trying to be healthier, but crediting progress to something that, you know, like it's just restrictive opposed to you actually making those, you know, conscious, healthy decisions to better your life is two different things to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny with that because there's those factors that people don't think about. So like a lot of people are into like no carbs after 6 p.m. or or carb cycling. And I'm like, okay, like as you're saying too, it's like if you were eating this many calories in the week, now with your carb cycling, you're eating this many calories in the week. Right. It's that difference that made the thing. It's not like the, the time of day you're eating the carbs. Exactly. Like, it's like a banana at one o'clock is still a banana at 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah, it's the same banana. Yeah. And you so can't, wait, why, don't, why don't you like intermittent fasting? I'm curious. I think it, I think it's, it's, it works for people if they, for example, like there's a lot of times when I'm like, you know, I'm not really hungry. I don't really want to eat. Mm -hmm. So it's out of, out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. But once I do eat, I'm always like, huh, I could go for a little more. Mm -hmm. so it's like, once you open up the door, that's the door where I could kind of like overeat and snack a little bit. Whereas if I'm not eating, then I'm not eating. I, I agree with that and it, it helps people with, you know, self-control. But I think as yeah. far as like, you know, there's just a lot of claims where like fitness people will be like, oh, I did intermittent fasting. I only ate one meal a day. And I still put on three pounds in the past couple months. I'm like, no, you didn't. You didn't yeah. put on three pounds from eating one 3,000 calorie meal a day and yeah. good luck digesting all of that. And it's like, yeah. you think about like, you look at, so like, you know, with like, um, when you basically eat your food, your blood glucose levels go up, right? Yep. And then insulin drives it back down. And the thing with simple sugars is it goes down further and it stays down. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, it goes like down below baseline if you're eating like really crappy foods, but if you're eating like solidly throughout the day, it remains at that like kind of baseline, right? Yep. 
And the thing is like when it starts to dip after maybe like three hours after like the last meal, you have glycogen coming in from like your liver, your muscles, your stored energy, which is like, hey, you know, we got you, we got you. But like people who intermittent fast, like they'll say the first like week or so, they're like, oh, so lightheaded all day because I did an 18 hour fast. I'm like, yeah, that's not good. That's you not get- good. That's not, you shouldn't be doing 18 hours. <laughs> Yeah, and, and like they're like, oh, but like it, it turns on like these hormones. Which oh yeah, like, my ketones are on fire. You're like, all right. Yeah, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> now I'm in a better, better fat burning zone. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. Like what ended up happening is like you your stomach probably shrank a little bit over time because like you ended up eating less because you don't want to eat a three thousand calorie meal. Right. It's easier to eat three thousand calories in twenty four hours as opposed to one hour. Yeah. So exactly. Less. And that's why you lost weight. It's not because you just suffer through eighteen hours of not eating. And yeah, your family, exactly. your family's like, oh, we're going to sit down for dinner and be like, not me. I've mean, been fasting. I'm like, bed. <laughs> great. Thanks for picking your own, you know, interests over your family. But exactly. No. And that's the thing too. Like I said, diets have to be sustainable. And that's why like I loosely use the word diets. It's like what you're eating, like your diet has to be sustainable because, you know, like it, when it interferes with like your social life and like your everyday life, like again, that's where it starts to become tricky because it can become unhealthy too, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, so I read this book. Have you, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Genius Foods. Genius Foods. Mm-hmm. Is that by like Stephen Gundry or something? No, I do not like Gundry though. I, I, I hate it. I've heard one podcast. I'm like, this guy oh, is okay. Cool. Yeah, no, I don't like Gundry, but it's by a guy, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's Max Lugavere, Lugavere, it's L-U-G-A-V-R-E. Okay. Anytime I read those books, I read them with like a skeptical eye. Like, obviously I'm not taking everything with like, you know, full, like, I I don't blindly follow anything, but (laughs) um, the whole book is just about how to like basically improve and maintain your brain health, which again, I think like is interesting. He mentions MCT oils in it and stuff like that about how it um helps with like your ketone something again i really need to like reread some of the parts because i breezed through some of it but um he has a whole thing about how intermittent fasting is good for your brain but with the exception that for men it shouldn't be more than like a 14 hour fasting period which I mean, if you think about it, like, let's say you have, like, a six o'clock dinner and you wake up, and, like, if you don't have a job like us where you're up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym, like, you're waking up at, you know, whatever, 7.30, you go to the office and you have your black coffee. That's pretty doable. Yeah. Um, But for women, he said it shouldn't be longer than 12 hours, which I thought was interesting because a lot of people, like, again, they'll just be like, oh, I'm going on for my 16-hour and eight-hour thing, and neither of those numbers are, like, you know, they're just numbers. <laughs> yeah, they're numbers that perfectly add up to 24. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I can do, do 12 and a half and, um, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think, I mean, if you, and the thing is, like, I read somewhere, I think I learned about it in school, is that, like, if you think about it, right, if you start skipping meals, mm-hmm. And you're hurting, right? You know, like you haven't gone, you've gone a while without eating and you're like low on calories, a little lightheaded. You're not thinking, oh, I should definitely go for a salad, go for fruit. No, exactly. Moderation. Your body is telling you, get the calories in as fast as possible because we're hurting. Right. Well, that's why they always say don't go grocery shopping on an empty stomach. Yeah, the, the the perimeter shopping. Yeah, but like, you know, if you're grocery shopping and you're starving, you're like, oh, I could totally get four frozen pizzas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because your body's like, I need energy now, and that's what it is. And I, I, was yeah, talking, exactly. I was talking to my dad about that earlier today. I was like, you know what, like, it's not our fault that we think fatty foods are so palatable. No. They're palatable because that's what gives us energy to hunt and to kill and to exactly. gather and reproduce and everything. It's like, that's, we need calories, we need energy to go right. do the thing. So anything that's like fatty and sugary is like, that's going to help us. But it's like, right. kind of like, you know, in moderation guys. You and know? both of those things too, like, especially in like the American diet are so predominant. It's like, we're going to build a liking and like, basically like, I mean, everyone knows that sugar is addictive, but yeah. it's like both of those things, it's like fat and sugar. It's like, we want fat because like from our like you know ancestors we need fat to store for the winter and to help us hunt but sugar is just addictive so it's like because there's so much fat and sugar and like all these processed american foods that people eat like regularly because they're easy they're convenient they're cheap you know 
yeah, we're going to be going to grab for that opposed to the kale and quinoa salad we see sitting at the, at the Whole Foods hot bar, you know? <laughs> are, you a, are you a Whole Foods person? I do like Whole Foods. There's one, so one actually very conveniently opened up like 20 minutes from me right after I graduated and moved home. And it's gigantic. It's like a Costco. It's my happy place. I love it. <laughs> I've never I been enjoy putting more money in Bezos's pocket, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Amazon owns Whole Foods, right? Yeah, unfortunately, I saw that um, the Amazon like van truck things, those blue things, mm-hmm. they're going all green. That's good, though. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's just cementing amazon like they're not going anywhere no they're really not but, yeah um, you know, i do whole foods but a lot, luckily for me too um around where i live there's a couple of like health food stores too and they're like they're even closer than whole foods so like if i'm running out and i just need like my powders for my smoothies or like something like that i can easily pick them up which is like super nice and convenient because if i were at Rutgers, that wouldn't be as easy yeah gross i'm not okay with it. but i was i was gonna ask you the, the personal training what is your ideal job? And it doesn't even have to be realistic. Like, <laughs> we'll get paid to do whatever you want. It could be something like me. Like, if I can get paid to just eat ice cream all day. Yeah, right? Wouldn't that be the dream? That's what I would do. So, like, <laughs> I, saw, I, do do? I saw a tweet the other day, and it was like, dream job. I do not, I simply do not dream of labor. <laughs> I was like, I feel that. <laughs> But I don't know, I really, like, I really do, I love my job. That's why I went down this road. And I always say, like, I'm glad I kind of took that extra year to figure out what I wanted to do rather than rush into a job that I hated. Um, But, you know, I really like the whole personal thing of going to, like, people's houses and, like, building that relationship with them and just being almost like a part of their family to the point where it's, like, they can rely on you for information and for help. And, like, they want to go on walks with you. They want your input on things. Um... So, like, I mean, being able to work for myself is, like, again, what I'm trying to start to do now. But ideally, that's what I'll keep up, you know, as I go on with my career. I mean, that can obviously change at some point. Like, at one point, I was like, maybe I'll be a trainer for, like, high-end, like, like NFL players or something like that. But, you know, who knows? Would you ever, uh, would you ever want to do that with, like, would you ever want to train, like, Olympic uh, ice skaters? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like, you know, as as vain as this might sound too, I kind of like being out of the skating world because it's like I can bring a lot of knowledge that isn't like, you know, commonly yeah. known. Like with skating things, it's like, yeah, obviously like XYZ exercise is gonna help me with my jumps and this is gonna help me with this. So it's nice to kind of like grab the knowledge that I have from my past experience as an athlete and bring it to somewhere where it's not, it's not like, you know, really well known, if that makes sense. That's a, that's your niche. Yeah. I don't know many other uh, ice skaters. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely whenever we uh, have to, like, I don't know if I'm at work or at school and have to do those stupid, say a fun fact about you. I always went with the, I'm a figure skater because not a lot of people do. (laughs) The two truths and a lie. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, um, <laughs> I was a soccer player. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, my mom made me uh, uh, these chocolate chip banana bread muffins today. Fancy. They were so good. <laughs> and she's always trying to like perfect the recipe of like what's going to be the best muffin. Well, it's better than your mom baking you something first off. Yeah, so. right off the bat, it could have been horrible, but because my mom made it, it was like I love. love. <laughs> Great, yeah. It was, it was so good. I thought about you. I was like, oh, like, sure you made it. Are you a banana bread fan? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you use, uh, what is it called, applesauce? Um, no. So I will, I, I like, I'm, I, I don't have any issues with eggs, so I take with eggs, but I'll use almond flour, which I know you can't have, but <laughs> I usually do almond flour for most of my baking, but you can wow. use I I just like I like I like the texture of it because I think it gets nice and like light and it's also because it's almond it's more protein yes so it's a little bit more nutritionally dense than just plain white flour have you used uh oat flour before yes I like oat flour but it it can get like a little like sackly (laughs) for lack of a better word yeah 
because I made, it um, absorbs liquid so much because they're oats, you know? Yeah, that was, so um, have you had the Kodiak pancakes? No, but I've heard like a lot of people do like them. Yeah, so they're super good, but they're stupidly expensive. Yeah, but they're so really high in protein, them. right? What's that? They're really high in protein. Yeah, so I buy them like sparingly. If, if it's like, I don't know, if I like, if I feel good about myself, I can yeah. look myself in the mirror, then I buy a box. You're like, I need these healthy $10 pancakes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I've tried to make my own recipes and I'll use oat flour. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Jamie, it does not work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oat flour is a little tricky because it just gets very gloppy. Yeah, yeah. It's like I put in like baking powder so it would rise. I try to yeah. put enough water and it's just, it's You're thick dead. and dry. It comes out dry. I'm like, why is it so dry? <laughs> Yeah, you're like, there's liquid in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's so frustrating. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to, I would maybe do like half and half, like half, like all purpose, half oat. That way you get that little bit extra nutritionally dense, um, you know, value in it. But yeah. and that's what I, like when I first started, like kind of like experiment baking, that's what I'd always do, like with almond flour, like I do half and half and see how it came out. Cause like I made banana bread for a long time and it was like half, regular all-purpose flour half almond flour and then I kind of just transitioned to all almond flour um but yeah I think it's a good way to kind of not only like make them taste better but in a way it can also kind of can kind of like train your palate to like like oat flour a little bit more like maybe one day you'll like the really gloppy texture that they come out to <laughs> yeah gloppy's not that bad guys trust me you uh, it's, it's a good gloppy <laughs> yeah <laughs> have, have you, you had um oh, what's sorry. that no, no, no you go first Oh, I was going to ask you, have you had cauliflower rice? So I don't use it as rice because I think you're just cheating yourself, but I'll add it into things. Like I'll make one of my like go-to things, actually two of my go-to things in the winter are chili. And um, basically I, I don't want to say bolognese because I'm going to get like murdered by all the Italians, but like. Is, you, like, is it not pronounced bolognese? No, but I was going to say, cause it's not like, it's not a bolognese. It's just like me mixing tomato sauce with a bunch of vegetables and like ground turkey <laughs> but I don't know what else to call it but what I do like um I'm sure you've seen on my food page but what I do is I'll take like ground turkey and I'll season it with like Italian seasoning so it's like I'll do like fennel sea salt like um onion powder garlic powder oregano and all that stuff so it basically makes like an Italian like turkey sausage and then I'll put like marinara on it and then add a bunch of different vegetables. But that's a place where I'll use cauliflower rice because it just blends in and it's just more vegetables. Actually, I also like cauliflower rice in smoothies. I know it sounds weird, but like you, if you add like a scant quarter cup of it, it blends right in and you can't really taste it. Okay. But make sure you steam it first. Don't do just raw cauliflower because it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try that out. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of that, um, and even zucchini too, because they're yes. pretty, pretty tasteless. Yes, Maya, have you had like zucchini boats? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, I, uh, I love zucchini. I put zucchini in everything. I put zucchini in my tacos. I put zucchini in yeah. like stir fries. Everything. My uh, my mom makes the meanest zucchini boats. Mm. I've like literally made them for my friends before. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, but that was like kind of like my, I guess, like introduction into vegetables. Because uh -huh. the problem was like my mom tried to get me. You weren't a big vegetable person. Yeah, she tried to get me into like raw vegetables. Raw vegetables are tough because they can taste very like green and like raw. <laughs> yeah, like I can do like salad works mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, it's like a nice salad that's more prepared. But like I can't do like carrots and celery and uh, cucumbers like I think that's like just the mouthfeel of it is just like, <laughs> ah, like can't do it but yeah. like I started getting into zucchini uh broccoli I can actually do a lot of and then cauliflower rice I get my vegetables in every single day and it's like super easy and have you I ever think... made um zucchini tots no but I've had zucchini chips okay just so the tots like again I <laughs> so a big thing with me I like if you're going to like like let's say like a plant-based thing or something where it's like a healthy like cauliflower pizza crust I always say you can't go in with the mindset of being like this is gonna taste like pizza crust this is gonna taste like cheese like you have to remember what it is you have to be like oh okay so this is cheese made out of coconut oil and some vegetables like it's gonna taste like not the same but I think that kind of like shifts your mindset to be like this is disgusting to oh this isn't that bad 
you know? Yes, yeah, you, you have to rationalize it. You're not going to be like, oh my God, this is so good. You have yeah, to say, can't even taste the difference. You have to halfway. Listen, yeah, it's, exactly. It's calories, healthier for you. It's not going to taste like exactly. you're so, But I really do like zucchini tots and obviously like tater tots are delicious and they're not, they're irreplaceable, but <laughs> <laughs> zucchini tots are so good. Like all you do is like you grate a zucchini or like two, however many you want. Um, with like a bit like the big end of the box grater so they're like nice big little shreds yes. um, and then put it into like a dish towel so you can wring out all the water because zucchini, zucchini like all vegetables and fruit have a ton of water in them so you like wring them out and then put them in a bowl with like an egg some breadcrumbs and like do you do you eat cheese yeah okay like parmesan cheese oh every and, day yeah okay and then you like take them and you mold them into little like tots and then you yeah. bake them and they're right. so good Oh my god! I'm gonna. Have to, I literally. I wrote it. To, I have a whiteboard that I. Put, <laughs> I figured like, if you had your little expo marker. Yeah. So I have um, written down so far. I have uh, half oat flour, half all-purpose flour for my <laughs> Korean pancakes. I have chili because I love chili, and I wanted to ask you for some recipes. And some oh, chili. I can. I'll send it to you. I, it's on my page. I have a really, really good chili recipe. I've got some secret ingredients in there. Yeah. Like, so do do you use miso at all in your cooking? I've never had it. I think. Okay, it's delicious. It's just like basically like salt on steroids. So it's like a really nice complex, like really like umami salt. Yes. Okay. So I have a big, and the thing is, because it's fermented, it lasts forever. Like I right. have like a little like what is it like a pint container of it in my fridge, and it like it just sits there, and I just use it when I need to. But I use that in my chili, and it is so good. Oh my gosh! I can't wait to try. Yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you the recipe. My, uh, I eat um like the vegetarian product Morningstar. Okay, yeah, I like Morningstar. And you know, they have these like uh, uh ground beef, mm -hmm. uh crumbles. I think they're called. Yeah. And I put those in my mom. Like she she makes it better than way better than I do. She does like garbanzo beans. Mm -hmm. Um, what are the white beans called? There's like yeah. kidney beans, garbanzo beans, or whatever. Cannellini. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's that. And like you do the a little bit of sauce. Italian seasoning, Parmesan, and the crumbles. Oh. oh my God. It's like one bowl and you're like super full. You yeah. feel good. You feel healthy. But like, oh my God. It's like, I'm happy it's like getting like to be fall weather because I'm like, yeah. I can definitely. My mom is like the queen of making soup. So she loves the fall. And, and like the fall's already her favorite season. But like when she's like, when it's cold, she's getting her little pot out. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. We, uh, we, I took a foods class in high school and we had a whole soup unit. Mm -hmm. Soups so are did, so they're slept on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did like minestrone, we did um, pasta fajoule, we did yeah. potato leek, we did, I mean, I'm Jewish, so we did matzo ball, like yeah. it's endless soups. How long have you been vegetarian? My whole life. Really? Yeah. I didn't, are your parents vegetarian? No. Oh, just you? <laughs> Yeah, I like I was an idiot and when I was like I don't know two and I'm like really big into like like dinosaurs and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was that kid who would have like okay, let's use our imagination. These are dinosaurs. I was like, oh like yeah, these are dinosaurs. Like boom, boom. like that was me. I love dinosaurs. Uh -huh. And my grandma was like uh I was like setting the table for my grandma and she was like, Hey Michael, can you put the, the, the can of tuna on the table so we can eat the tuna? And I said, you know, Grandma, why is there a fish on it? You know, like the star kissed as a picture. Yeah, of the picture. yeah, yeah. And she's like, Michael, because tuna's fish. Yeah. And I guess I didn't understand that at two or three years old. Yeah. So I said, I'll like, no, I'll have the tuna, but but hold the fish. But like, no fish, please. Yeah. <laughs> like, Michael, it doesn't work like that. I was like, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Just like, I just don't want the fish. Just give me sure, the tuna. I'll have the filet mignon, but just without the beef. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that was it. And then she was like, Michael, like, I have to break it to you, dude. Like. These were animals. And I was like, I ain't eating that. And then I kind of just stuck to it. Wow. Um, but I mean, I don't care. Everyone eats meat. Do whatever you want. But like, yeah. for me, it's like, eh. So are I, you not eat eggs either? I do eat eggs. Okay. That's but okay. I, I know lots of people, like, I, I have my friend. Um, she's pescatarian. So it's like, you know, she eats fish, but like, doesn't eat any other meat. So, you know, everyone has their own, you know diet they I, like it. I came around and I eat fish from time to time mm -hmm. like if we're going out getting like hoagies or subs or however you call them I'll get a tuna hoagie okay and I like that but like I'm not about to eat like a hot dog or chicken yeah um, it, I, and I think it's super what is it called like um uh what is it called like um 
hypocritical. I'm super hypocritical because I'll eat tuna, but I won't eat a chicken. So it's like, <laughs> well, okay. So my, I mean? my thought process, I don't really eat pork or beef. Like I'll eat, like if we're going to a nice restaurant and they have steak on the menu, I'll be like, okay, I'll get it here because I know that it was like a, well, like it's a, well, like it's a grass fed, like humanely raised steak and they're going to prepare it well. But if I'm cooking, like I stick to poultry and fish because like, again, weird thing of my brain is like, if I, <laughs> this is morbid too, but I'm like, if I don't think that I could personally like kill this animal and like, you know, get meat from it, I'm not going to eat it. Like I think I could kill a chicken. I think yeah. I could kill a fish, but like if it came to like a little cow, I'd be like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I love that. That's uh, it's funny. Cause one of my friends and, um, her dad's a farmer mm -hmm. and I was like, well, what do you guys like? raise and she yeah. was like oh like like pigs and i was like well how do you kill them and she told me and i was like <laughs> not my favorite thing but it's funny because there's my mom was always trying to get me to eat chicken yeah um and there, i actually looked at some statistics with chickens there's a three to one chicken to human ratio on this planet wow <laughs> 19 billion chickens that's crazy so like i don't feel super bad i'm like ah whatever it's just my parents keep kosher and I feel like I'd want to respect that. Yeah, um, I totally get it. But like right now I'm like super lazy and I don't want to have to like learn how to cook something new. Yeah. And I mean, with meat, you always have to worry about cross contamination stuff anyway. So it's like, if that's a whole other kind of like hurdle that you have to go over mentally to be like, Oh, what do you mean? I can't like make this. And then like my fingers, <laughs> like I can't have the raw yeah. chicken on my fingers. Yeah. My, uh, my meal prep is ridiculous. This is what I do in the mornings. I, so I wake up and I have, um, a quarter cup of oats mm -hmm. and then I put in a scoop of protein powder that that's breakfast it's like nothing like oats, right what like cooked oats no oh just like oats <laughs> like literally oats oh. and water and I stir oh, okay, it and okay. I so at least it. you put water in I'm like you yeah. just like <laughs> <laughs> dry <laughs> like people you see the people with their like c4 at the gym like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah they just like they down it yeah so yeah I'm that. like and then I get my workout in, take a walk, and I come back, and it's the, the laziest thing I do in my life, and I will say it, I don't care. I, I do um, steamed bag of cauliflower rice, mm -hmm. and then I put the bag in um, a bowl, and mm -hmm. then with my egg whites, I put the egg whites in a liquid measuring cup, mm -hmm. pop it in the microwave for four minutes, mm -hmm. add a liquid measuring cup, the, like the souffléed eggs, it goes right on top of the cauliflower rice, and I mix it all up, and I eat it. So everything's oh. cooked, but like, I don't, it's the laziest thing. It <laughs> hurts my heart hearing that, but I'm glad it works for you. <laughs> really, I'm going to get up this picture. I knew I had to tell you that because like you have, you made a, an omelet. That oh, my, was like little, my little rolled omelet. The most aesthetically pleasing omelet I've <laughs> ever seen. I was like, oh, I got to tell Jamie about this. <laughs> yeah, so you do, you count, do you count macros and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm sharing this. People have to see this. If you're listening to this on a podcast, stop what you're doing. Watch the YouTube video of it. <laughs> Look at this freaking omelet that you egg content coming in hot. Boom. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you even have like the little, like, was that like parsley crisps or something? Oh, like that? Our, my mom has like, I hope I get her green thumb. She has the best like herb garden I've ever seen. So we have chives, rosemary, thyme, sage, like all the herbs in the world. So it's so nice in the morning because I just go out in the morning with little scissors and cut my chives from my eggs. Nice. Yeah, this is, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> I like it. You're like, I cooked this with our olive oil. Sorry, friends. Yeah, well, it's a French omelet and they, you know how the French love their butter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>